Today, I want to show you how you can have one card that's all about you, for recruiters, for networking, and for people to get to know you with less effort, but still a lot to showcase. Before we dive in, most of us already have a lot of things online. A personal portfolio, LinkedIn, GitHub, maybe a Linktree or a Notion page. All of them are useful, but they also take time to build, update, and maintain. And honestly, most people don't really keep them in sync. So I've been thinking about something simpler. One place that takes less effort, but still shows who you are, what you do, and what you're working on, that's where Dink comes in. It's not trying to replace everything you already have. It just pulls your work into one clean living profile instead of spreading it across five different platforms. I'll show you how it works and why I think this makes sense, especially for developers and people in tech. Okay, so first, let's create an account. I'm going to sign in with GitHub since that's the quickest for me right now. All right, we're signed in. Now let's click on the profile because we need to configure it first. Give me a second. Okay, now it asks for a username. I'll go with Mariah Tech since that's me. Now it asks me to upload my resume. And this part is important because DingQ uses your resume to understand your experience, your roles, your skills, and your background. Instead of filling out long forms manually, it reads the resume and builds the profile structure for you, which is honestly really convenient. So I'll upload my resume real quick. Now I can also add some social links, which is great. My social links are already connected because I had them listed on my resume. Ding picked them up automatically. So LinkedIn and GitHub were already there. I didn't have to add them manually. And that's basically it for the setup. And we even get some confetti for finishing that. Love that. As you can see, it says my Dean Q card has been generated. And overall, I really like the UI. Right now, I'm censoring some personal information, like my email and full name. So let me update that quickly. While I'm at it, I'll upload a profile picture as well. Let me do that before we continue. All right, so this is what it looks like right after signing up. I didn't spend time setting things up. I didn't tweak sections or customize layouts. I just uploaded my resume and added a profile image. And this is the result. Starting on the left side, this is the main profile area. You have your name, your role, and your location. All of this comes directly from the resume. Below that, you'll see these tags. They're a quick summary of what you work on. Things like design engineering, UI, and front-end development. I really like this part because it saves you from explaining yourself in long sentences. Under that, there's a short bio. This is also generated automatically. You can edit it later if you want, but even without touching it, it already gives good context about what you do. On the top right, you'll see signals from your work. For example, GitHub stars and projects. So instead of just saying I code or I build things, there's actual activity visible here. It's subtle, but it adds credibility without you having to say much. In the center, there's a timeline. This shows how your experience evolves over time. It's not a wall of text, it's visual. So someone can look at this for a few seconds and understand where you've been and how things progressed. Below that, there's the network section. This shows your connections and how they're related. It's not just a list of names, it adds structure and gives more context about your professional space. On the bottom right, there's the career trajectory section. This gives an idea of where your background fits best, not as a promise and not as a prediction, just guidance. I see it more as a reflection than a decision. The main thing I like about this is how little effort it takes. I didn't build a portfolio. I didn't design a website. I didn't spend days rewriting my resume. I uploaded one document and ended up with a clean structured profile that's easy to share. Okay, but it doesn't stop here. Now I'll update my tags. Things like Next.js, TypeScript, Tailwind, Convex, and UXUI. Let's add a bit more to the profile. I'll also add an image of my desk setup because I think it's nice to show where I work most of the time. So let me do that quickly. As you can see, I can also change how this card looks responsively, from a square to a smaller rectangle. I really like the fact that I can drag and drop things everywhere. It feels very smooth. Now I'll add my Instagram card and my YouTube card as well. You can see Instagram loads automatically. It shows my followers and even a post. I really like that everything updates on its own. I don't have to manually keep things in sync, which honestly removes a lot of stress. And that's how it looks. One more thing I really love is the discovery page. This is basically where you explore what other people are working on. At the top, you can see a text input. This is where you describe what you're looking for. And above here, you can also see research papers and publications. Okay, let me show you. I typed design engineer. It might not be very clear, but let's see what happens. Dink actually responds and asks me to clarify. It says something like, are you looking for a specific person, a specific company, a specific field, or people who have published papers? So I respond and explain what I mean. And then it starts working. You can see here that it explains what it's doing. It's searching across different sources, planning the search, and collecting candidates.
Now under here, these are the results. This is where it gets really cool. You can see a list of design engineers, and honestly, I recognize a lot of these names. For example, here we have the creator of Chakra UI. That's someone I already know and respect. We also see design engineers from Vercel, people working on design systems, UI polish, and animations, real well-known people in the space. If I click on one of them, on the right side, you can see a full profile. It explains why this person is a good match, what they work on, their expertise, and even their public applications or projects. So this isn't just random profiles, it's actually showing why someone appears here. And I really like that because it builds trust in the results. You're not guessing and you're not scrolling endlessly. It feels more like research than social media. So the discovery page is less about browsing content and more about finding the right people, whether you're hiring, networking, or just curious who's working on what. And finally, this is the inbox. This is where messages and conversations live. Right now it's empty, which just means I don't have messages yet. Once you connect with people through search or discovery, this is where the conversation continues. It's clean, simple, and focused. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you wanna share your Dink profile, you can click here and share it as a link or a QR code. Let's see how it looks. And boom, this is the public view. It's clean, it's responsive, and this is how it looks on mobile as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If if you want to try this for yourself, you can visit Dink and set up your own card in just a few minutes. I'll leave the link below so you can check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.